name is Musa. I'm from Gambia. I was born in, in a town called Fajikunda. I didn't know my father, but it was like I don't need to know my father because my mother has tried so much for me. She always gave me all the support that I need. And my dream is to be a footballer one day. I don't know how it's going to be happen, but that was my dream. If I become a footballer, then I will take my mother anywhere I see once. You know, my first goal was to make my mother the most the happiest mother on earth. I want to make her a queen, but not all that you wish is granted to you. All of a sudden, she got some illness and she was admitted at the hospital. For one week, no doctor could attend to her because you don't have any money or no good kind of medicine in a Gambian hospital for them to cure her. She cannot even talk, she will just be murmuring. I cannot hear anything that she said. I can see it in her eyes that she's suffering, but I am helpless. I'm helpless, I cannot do anything. So there's a nearby mosque, I went there and prayed, so I prayed for her, for her well-being. Well, I was praying and I hear people crying and I have feeling that something bad happened. She died in a, in on, on Friday. I have my friend who will tell me, please don't go. This this journey is is very risky. You end up kill, killing yourself there. I told him that I got nothing to lose. My mother has tried so much for me, and I cannot even repay her for even a single one before she died. Because in Gambia, I could, I could not have the opportunity to, to play football. You don't have any person who is influenced to help you. Your, your talent is a waste. I, don't, I never want my talent to be a waste. That was also part of the reason why I left, I left Gambia. I was scared, of course I was scared. But we went up to Mali. The day that is, is some sort of a suicide mission, actually. Because if you're not lucky, if you met with some bad, bad people smugglers, they'll just take your money from you, drop you inside the ditch in the middle of nowhere, and you will end up dying there. I almost lost my life inside it in, in the desert. Um, there's this way of man who smuggled people to the desert. So we paid him extra money for him to smuggle us to the desert. When they are transporting us, they will just put you in the back of the trunk of a car. Everyone was sitting on top of me and I can only move my neck. Apart from that, I can only move my body parts. And we'll be crying inside the vehicle and he will just come out, take a gun and shoot it on the sky, hold everyone to come out. But I didn't, I didn't drop out because I cannot move and, and people are telling me that if you don't come out, he will shoot you. And he would come and take the, the head of the gun and you know, he like animals. He can put my head here and when I reach the other time, I know that I'm bleeding. The first day that we reached in Libya, we arrived at night. It was very cold. And I will have this blanket board that someone vomited on top of my blanket, so I cannot use it. People are sleeping outside, but I was feeling so cold, I don't have anywhere to sleep. I would just go to stand inside the bathroom 
until in the morning doing my hand like this. Though when I was in Gambia, I, I had people saying that Libya is a very risky place, but I don't know the, the extent of the risks in Libya. It's, it's kind of hell, actually. The sad story of mine is that in that place, I met one Senegalese man there, he's a boy like me. And one day we, we are in, inside the camp playing this the gym. There's this Arab man come, he said you are disturbing him, man. He shoot people and the crowd and all suddenly hit the boy in the case. And that boy, he happened to die. That's the day that I run from that camp. That moment, if I have a route back home, I will grab, just grab the route and go back. But when you, li you reach in Libya, there is no way back home. I've been living in that place for two months, and then, then I have to go to the seaside. Yeah, the first, the first time that we arrived in, in the seaside, I saw this big the boat, balloon boat. More than 50 people come and take the boat and take it and put it inside the water. At first, I don't even want to look at it because when I look at the water for so long, I will start, my head will start spinning and I will start vomiting. People are in panic. Some people, crazy people, even want to fight inside the boat. Gambians and Nigerians, they don't get along, man. they always fight. Because intolerance is everywhere, people don't want to tolerate each other. Everywhere they go. I was just asking them not to fight because if they fight inside the boat, you all die. But my heart was beating very fastly. I was very scared. And until we saw this helicopter outboard. And they rescued us, they put us into this big ship. Took us to this place in Kaliar, in the port of Kaliar. When I go out, I feel like people look at me differently. I don't know, I think that's normal here yeah, because I'm different. Sometimes I will go out and I will, I will see black people back in the street and I never want to do that. And I, sometimes I will lose hope but, but I will, I came a long way here, so I came with the faith that God loves all of us, so we have plans for all of us. I see, I always, I always believe in myself. I know what I can do. I want to be a footballer, that's what I want. I'm with this boy and this boy, but my team always wins. <laughs> One man saw me playing with the ball and he asked me if I'm a footballer and I told him yes. And I even have to send some of my videos to him. So he took them to the prison of Carbonia and maybe next week I will start training with the team. Many people call us like economy migrant. People don't define my reality. I'm not an economic migrant. I'm a dream chaser. <laughs> <laughs>